Hello everyone. Welcome to .NET Core Central. In the last few posts, I have been focusing on streaming application. I started with Kafka integration, where I created .NET Core Kafka consumer and producer and created message stream through Kafka. And after that, I introduced the reactive extension inside of .NET Core. So essentially taking the Kafka string into reactive extension in memory stream and using it. And then my last post, I introduced SignalR where I channeled the Kafka stream through the reactive extension into a SignalR hub and that is then transferred to the client browser. But for the SignalR application, I used a rudimentary HTML page with some JavaScript to show the data as a console. Today, what I'm trying to do is to use one of the modern web framework to create a web application and integrate the SignalR stream into that application. So as the IDA, I have decided to use Visual Studio Code. I've been using it for quite some time and it's a fantastic IDE. It has a lot of feature and it supports most of the programming languages out there. And for client-side programming, it's just one of the best. For the web framework, I'm going to use React. So React is a JavaScript library for building modern web applications. It's built by Facebook and then open sourced. It's a declarative and component-based JavaScript library. Now for creating React.js, I am not going to just handcraft all the files and structure. I'm just going to use a generator. And Yeoman is a tool which helps creating those generators. So almost for all web framework out there, there is a Yeoman generator. And same goes true for React. For React, there is a React-Webpack generator which we can use for React application. And usually the generators create file and structures following the best practices and it's built by open source community. For installing Yeoman, the prerequisite is to have NPM, which means Node needs to be installed. In my previous videos, I have installed Node, hence NPM got installed. If you want to look at my previous video, you can do that, or you can search in Google and follow the instruction to install Node. I have already installed Yeoman in my uh, PC, and the command for installation is npm install yo. I have used hyphen g because I wanted to install it globally. Once the npm is installed, next thing you'll have to do is to install the generator for React. So I'm going to open up a command prompt, and in the command prompt, I'm going to install npm install hyphen g generator hyphen react slash webpack. This is going to install the Yeoman generator for React. Once it is installed, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my app folder and I'm going to create a new directory for my web application. And I'm going to name it as time management dash web and I'm going to directly open up the folder. Once the folder is created, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the react application using your main generator. So I'm going to use the command yo and then I'm going to use react dash web and this is going to create all the necessary scaffolding and create all the static file and download the required libraries or required packages. I'm going to use the default settings. Go ahead and install and now it is doing npm install which is going to install all the necessary packages. Looks like it is installed. Now I'm just going to open the source code. So for that I'm going to use code dot and that's going to open the source code in Visual Studio Code. So the code is open. Now for our purpose we will be focusing mainly on components and I'm going to just work with the main.js. So this is the app component. This is the only component we have. 
So to see how it looks like, I'm just going to run this application. And for that, I'm going to use npm run. npm start. This is going to start the node server. And it's listening to port 8000. And if we go to localhost 8000, we can see the default page showing up here. The next thing what we want to do is to install the SignalR uh, client script because that's what we want to do. I want to have the react.js application receiving the SignalR message through the Kafka and Active extension. For that, let me stop the node server and then install the SignalR. So for that, I'm going to say npm install at the rate ASP.NET slash signalr slash client and this is going to install the signalr client into my web application and after the signalr is installed I'm going to go and update the code to use the signalr so to start with I'm going to first import the hub connection from the signaler so at the rate ASP map slash signaler dash client once I have got a handle of the hub connection next thing I'll have to use it so what I'll do is first thing I'm going to create a constructor and in the constructor Pass. let me pass the properties and the constructor first thing I'm going to do is call the super which is the with the properties and then I'm going to create state for this particular component so state will have two properties first one would be the booking message and the second one is going to be the booking hub connection now after I do that the next thing I'll do is I'll hook up to the React framework callback when the component is loaded so let's say so I'll use the event component mount and in this callback what I'm going to do is to the state I'm going to set the state but before that first thing I'll have to do is I'll have to create the hub connection so I'll do uh, constant and I will have booking hub connection equal to new of hub connection and here I am going to pass the URL for the hub column 59084 slash booking hub and then I am going to set the state for booking hub connection and in the callback I'm going to do this dot state dot booking hub connection dot start and then on start I'm going to do just a console dot right log small started this to the next line on error you can do the same thing console dot log
Ero que não consigo lá. So this will complete the connection. After the signal is connected, next thing I'm going to do is this dot state dot hub connection dot on and what I want to do is when the booking method is invoked I need a callback. So here I'm going to say message and then when I get a callback I'll say this dot set state set state for the message but before that I will take it in a constant so as a constant cooking message equal to message this dot set state booking message so I'm going to I just have an incorrect syntax for setting the state. Let me fix that. Then let me fix it here because it's an object. Okay. So my setting state is completed. Next thing what I can do is I can come and update here and change this code saying message from server and then this dot state dot booking message so this is my client code once I do that I'll go back to my C sharp code which I wrote in last few videos and here I'll have to update the course policy because I'll be calling from a different port. So I'll have to allow any origin and then allow any method. So this should let me call the hub from a different port number. So I'm going to start this application and I'm also going to go and start my node server. I'm going to say npm.start. My signal is also starting up. My NPM has started. Let me open up the developer tool and refresh. And I see a couple of warning here. Unexpected console statement. Oh, I have to update my. So I have to update my link file. Put my ES link and for the no console. I'm going to try to save it as I'm going to save it as one. Come back and restart. And once it is restarted, I'm going to go back to my application and refresh. So I'm facing this issue. But my half connection which is a class it's not wrapped inside the curly braces this is the main problem so once I do that I save it go back to the application and do a refresh and my signal is started so now I can see a message from server dash so this is the time when I'm going to go back open my producer and start it so dotnet run will start my dotnet core kafka producer and once the producer is started i am going to send a message which should be transmitted to the react client so hello react application that and here I see hello react application is being reflected. We send another message update message and yeah it's updated. 
so here we can see how we can connect how we can create a react application using yeoman scaffolding and then after that installing the asp.net signaler client we can easily connect the signaler into my react application obviously i had to update the react server code with couple of changes i had to add the allow any origin and allow any method but apart from that my server code did not have to be changed at all and the client i had to connect to the hub and then after connecting to the hub i was setting up the state for my booking connection and inside the state callback i was starting the booking hub and then booking hub connection and then attaching the booking method into it and on the callback of the booking method are uh, the message i was getting i was setting it to the booking message state and later on i was using the same state into the rendering div which rendered the message to the ui so this is all i had for today this is how we can integrate a react js application with asp.net core backend thanks for watching the video and please leave your comment